Thank you so much for this opportunity to join this distinguished panel. Uh, thanks to the Endourology Society and, of course, to Boston Scientific for supporting this educational event. Uh, I am going to be talking about the uh, trilogy experience in the United States uh, and specifically a multi center trial that um, is uh, currently in press. Here are my disclosures. So, when we talk about the quality of evidence, um, we really need to consider how trials are designed. And one of the, the benefits of this particular trial is that much like the European study, it's rigorously designed as a multi-center prospective randomized trial, which is intended to compare Trilogy to really uh, a similar uh, dual energy, single uh, hand piece or single probe lithotripter. And um, so in this study, the Trilogy was compared to the shock pulse. Uh, this uh, the shock pulse has been shown in prior studies to have superior stone clearance to the commercially available lithotrites, such as the LUS2, the Cyber1, and the lithoclast. And we were shown earlier that preliminary in vitro data uh, demonstrated a reduction of about 50% in mean uh, lithotriptor clearance times um, using one centimeter bago stones uh, for the trilogy versus the shock pulse. So in this trial, there were 100 patients undergoing PCNL that were randomized one-to-one -to, -one to Trilogy or shock pulse. The inclusion criteria were stones that were greater than two centimeters in diameter or greater than a one and a half centimeters in the lower pole. Patients that had either anticipated multiple access or had had recent shock with the TRIPSI were excluded from this trial. As in the prior um, trial that uh, Dr. Wiseman discussed. The primary outcome for this trial was to look at the clearance rate of the targeted stone burden. We wanted to look at the stone clearance rate as well as stone clearance time, but secondary outcomes were also considered, which are important when we talk about comparison of devices, such as device malfunctions, what the stone free rates are, um, how often we did a secondary procedure, what complications, and then of course, what's the satisfaction with the device. So the study hypothesis was that the trilogy and the shock pulse would both demonstrate superior stone clearance to previous lithotriptors, but that the trilogy would outperform the shock pulse for harder stones. In this particular study, harder stones were identified as composition of brushite or calcium oxalate monohydrate. There were seven surgeons at three high volume stone centers that enrolled patients. And we were previously discussing the benefits of accurately determining stone volume. This study was unique in that it used a software program called the Quantitative Stone Analysis Software, the QSAS, which, which was developed at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota to very accurately determine in an objective fashion, stone volume as well as density as measured by Hounsfield units. In all of these cases, a, a 24 or 30 French percutaneous access sheath was used. So more standard PCNL, not many in this particular study. Post-operative imaging included a CT scan on post-operative day number one, and then a KUB and renal ultrasound to determine overall stone free rate between six and 12 weeks post-surgery. Whether secondary procedures were performed was really at the discretion of the surgeon. So here is a look at the preoperative data. Uh, comparing the, the patients that are randomized to Trilogy versus shock pulse. And as you can see, very similar in terms of patient characteristics of age, gender, and BMI. Uh, we, we, we do not have uh, super thin patients here in the United States. And so I think this is a very accurate representation of the patients who are undergoing PCNL uh, in this country. Um, in addition, very similar um, in terms of target stone volume and surface area. Uh, between the two groups, and in density of stones. As you can see with Hounsfield units over 900, there were a large percentage of hard stones in these uh, trials, in this trial. So let's look at the results. Uh, case duration, very similar between Trilogy and Shock Pulse between 104 and 121 minutes. Stone clearance times were really similar at about 5.4, sorry, 5.84 for Trilogy and 6.73 minutes for Shock Pulse. When you look more closely at stone clearance rate for surface area, which is measured in millimeters uh, squared per minute, again, no difference really between Trilogy and shock pulse. 
However, if you look at stone clearance rates, considering volume, which again, we've now said multiple times really makes a difference, this is measured in centimeters cubed per minute, much sub superior statistically significant benefit in using the trilogy over the shock pulse. And then when you look at outcomes in terms of residual stones, the trilogy group had much less residual stones in the size of four to 10 millimeters compared to the shock pulse. Shock pulse had 22% of the residual stones of four to 10 millimeters versus only 12% in the trilogy. And by definition of this, the secondary procedures being at the surgeon's discretion, it's not surprising then that the number of secondary procedures for the shock pulse group was substantially greater than what we saw in the trilogy at 34.7% versus only 17.7%. However, it should be noted that the overall stone free rates for both groups were similar and the percentage of hard stones in each group was similar. And this is just a, a graphical representation of stone volume in centimeters cubed and clearance time partitioned by the lithotripper uh, type uh, shock pulse uh, versus trilogy. And really uh, all it's demonstrating <clears throat> is that compared to shock pulse, a trilogy reduced the anticipated increases in clearance times that you would see with larger stones. So we talked a little bit about stone clearance rates, which was clearly the primary outcome for this uh, study. But I think it's important to consider anytime you're introducing a new technology, uh, the device malfunctions and the satisfaction with the device. So this was measured in this study. Again, the surgeon satisfa satisfaction was measured in a Likert scale of one to 10 and really um, similar between the trilogy and shock pulse. What was different um, was the number of device malfunctions with substantially uh, more device malfunctions for shock pulse than for trilogy. Um, and most of the uh, device malfunctions were, were due to clogging or uh, issues with suction of the shock pulse. Um, we saw in the prior uh, presentation uh, comparison to other commercially available lithotrites. I think it's important to understand that these were not compared head to head in any particular trials. So they, you know, these clinical investigations aren't directly comparable, but I think it gives you some um, idea of the magnitude of stone clearance compared to what we have traditionally been using. So as Dr. Wiseman mentioned, the stone clearance times for cyber wand, lithoclast, and stone breaker have been around 23 to 28 minutes with stone clearance rates between 24 and 32 millimeters squared per minute. In comparison, in this recent trial, Trilogy has been shown to have a stone clearance rate of 5.8 minutes, uh, which is substantially less, uh, and a stone clearance rate of 101 millimeters squared per minute, which is much better than what's been published uh, for these other commercially available lithotrites. In addition, the, the device malfunctions for these other lithotrites have been anywhere from 9 to 32%. So again, Trilogy with 1.9% is substantially less. Uh, so really, it seems to be a major improvement uh, upon what we've been using in the past. So in conclusion, uh, Trilogy and shock poles do demonstrate similar stone clearance times. That was one of the um, you know, sort of hypotheses, but when Trilogy was um, looked at in terms of the stone volume clearance rate, it was 60% faster than the shock poles. They had overall uh, similar stone free rates, but a lower rate of secondary procedures for Trilogy and the device malfunctions were less for Trilogy. 